Hey guys, in today's video, we're gonna break down the best crops to grow when starting a microgreens business and why this can make a massive difference between a business that is highly profitable, paying you a good salary, that allows you to quit your nine to five job versus a farm that is struggling to find profitability and doing more work without the payoff. There are literally hundreds of varieties of microgreens you can grow, but there are only five you need to start growing to have a profitable, lean, mean farming machine. So the first question you should be asking is why is picking the right crop so important? The answer, if you're growing microgreens as a hobby, that's one thing. But if you're starting a business, then profitability determines how much money you can actually pay yourself from the hard work you're doing. The more profitable crops you grow, the faster you can pay yourself. And the sooner you can go all in on something you are actually passionate about instead of the nine to five job that just isn't giving you the fulfillment you crave. Also, picking the right crops allows you to grow the business faster because you'll have more money to reinvest and avoid the costly crop selection choices I made in the early years of my farming career. So the top five crops to grow when starting a microgreens business are pea shoots, broccoli, kale, radish, and sunflower shoots. The combination of these five crops is a recipe for success. The next question you should be asking is why are these five crops the best crops to start out with? I actually made a full video on this exact topic and there's a free tool on our website called the microgreens crop ring system that really helps guide you in picking the crops rather than just relying on me to tell you what crops to grow. And you can download that for free at microgreensconsulting.com. My goal is to teach farmers to be self-reliant. I wanna teach you how to fish rather than catching fish for you, metaphorically. So there are four categories that determine which crops to grow and these are market demand, ease of growth, speed of growth, and yield per tray. The combination of these four will help determine the profitability of a crop and thus if you should grow that crop. Now there are plenty of crops that make sense to grow once you have scale, but starting out the goal should be maximizing your space and profit. And as you'll see in a minute, the difference can be massive between one farm to the next depending on the crop selection you choose. So first off, market demand determines how many people in your local area want to actually purchase that crop. So for example, carrot microgreens are super niche. Maybe a few restaurants in your town use them compared to something like pea shoots where restaurants, retail stores, farmers markets, and direct to consumer delivery customers all want to consume this product. So the more market demand for a crop, the more it makes sense for you to grow that crop. Next is ease of growth. If there's a microgreens crop that requires you to be a mad scientist and spend hundreds of hours perfecting the growing recipe, versus a crop like broccoli that is almost foolproof to grow even as a beginner, which one would you wanna grow? I would choose broccoli. There's a lot of aspects to starting a farm and the easier and less time consuming you make the actual farming part, the more time you have to actually grow and learn the business. Next is speed of growth. This is a really important one. There are different lengths of time it takes to grow different microgreen varieties. For example, basil takes around two weeks to grow under lights, whereas radish only takes seven days to grow under lights. This means you can grow twice as many trays of radish in a month or a year than basil. So you get 52 harvests a year from radish and only 26 from basil. So right off the bat, by choosing the wrong crops, you'll decrease your profit potential in half or sometimes even more. Lastly, we have yield per tray. This is a really big deal for microgreens crops. Most clamshells of microgreens have between two to four ounces or roughly 60 to 100 grams of product in them. If you're growing crops with low yields, that means you'll have low profits from these crops. For example, pea shoots will yield around 800 grams per tray, whereas a crop like amaranth will yield about 100 grams per tray. So if you're selling a 100 gram unit, you get seven to eight clamshells with pea shoots and only one clamshell of amaranth. If you're selling these clamshells for $6, that's $48 of revenue for pea shoots versus just $6 of revenue for amaranth. That's eight times the revenue for the same work, the same growing space, meaning the difference is practically all profit. Now let's break down each crop and why you should grow them. Pea shoots are by far the most profitable microgreen crop you can grow. It's easy to grow, fast to grow, has the highest yields I've ever seen from any crop, let alone microgreens. With a yield of 800 grams, this crop will produce almost $50 of revenue per tray per week. And you can easily get that yield by using our Super Soul recipe that is available for free in our microgreens growing guide available on our website. Sunflower shoots is another highly profitable microgreen you can grow when starting out. 
It's a little tougher to perfect the growing recipe than pea shoots, but if you use a high quality seed, it should be a really easy crop to grow. Sunflower shoots are even faster to grow than pea shoots, being ready in just seven to eight days after seeding. They also have a fairly high market demand as they are super crunchy and offer a unique flavor for salads, sandwiches, wraps, and even soups. Sunflower shoots are the second highest yielding crop in the microgreens world, averaging about 600 grams per tray. But I've seen trays yielding as high as 750 grams from one single tray, which is crazy. Next is radish. Radish is a really great crop to add a spicy flavor or some beautiful purple color to your product lineup. Radish is a great crop on its own, can also be mixed in with other crops to make a microgreen salad mix, which greatly increases its demand at farmer's market and direct delivery customers. Radish microgreens are super easy to grow. They're probably the easiest microgreen to grow in my opinion. There's also a lot of varieties of radish. There's purple leaf varieties, red stem with green leaf, purple stem with green leaf, super mild flavored ones, super, super spicy flavored ones. There's just so much variety all in this one crop, which is really cool. And all the varieties are high yielding from around 250 to 300 grams per tray. Radish is similar to sunflower in that it only takes seven to eight days from seed to harvest. Assuming you are getting 250 grams per tray and selling them in a 60 gram clamshell, you can expect revenue of roughly $25 per tray. Lastly, we have broccoli and kale, which I'll lump into one as they have quite similar growing habits. These two crops are well known for their nutritional benefits, making them the most sought after microgreens, especially broccoli microgreens, as they are all the rage these days from getting publicity on the Joe Rogan podcast and other health influencers on the internet. You'll likely find that you'll sell more broccoli microgreens than any other crop if selling to direct to consumer, farmers markets, or retail stores. Broccoli and kale take about 10 days from seed to harvest, but because they only take three days to germinate, and seven days under grow lights, you can still get 52 crops per year, which is a great benefit of these crops. They are both very easy to grow and with very few challenges that beginners face when growing them. They yield roughly 200 to 250 grams per tray, meaning you can expect 20 to $25 of revenue per tray. So there you have it, the top five crops to grow when starting a microgreens business. As you can see, crop selection makes a tremendous difference in determining if your farm will be a money printing machine versus making a few bucks on the side each week. I hope this helps you on your journey of starting a microgreens farm and I'll see you in the next video.